I've been playing New Horizons since the game first launched in March 2020. And since then I've learned so many tips and tricks which have helped me play the game, especially with the help of other players. Even though I've been playing for so long now, I still find myself learning new stuff all the time, so I thought I'd make another video going over 10 must-know tricks that you'll hopefully wish you knew sooner. Whether you're new to the game or you've been playing a long time like myself, hopefully there's something here new that you can learn. Leave a like on the video if you're ready for some tips and tricks, and let's jump right into this. Now, finding Celeste can be a bit of a tricky problem sometimes. You want to find her so you can get those really cool DIY recipes, but where is she? Well, an easy way of finding her is doing group stretching. If you head to resident services and do group stretching in the morning, Celeste should hopefully show up with the other characters which will indicate that she is currently somewhere on your island. This is a nice and quick way of seeing if she's there immediately. You could also head into the roost I believe and see if she's there a few hours before she's due to appear at night. But I would definitely say this is the quickest way of finding her. And hey, you can get some decent rewards from doing group stretching ultimately, like those exclusive reactions and some nook miles and such, so you're making two bits of good progress in one by doing this. And you don't even have to complete group stretching, you can literally just let it play and do nothing, and you'll know whether Celeste has arrived on the island or not, so I hope you find this trick useful. Moving on, people tend to find themselves carrying around their tools in their pockets all the time, which is definitely a very common thing. However, there are some other things that I think you'll want to carry around in your pockets that could be even more useful. For example, you might want to carry around a workbench so that you can craft at any time. Simply place the item anywhere on your island and boom, you can craft. This means you won't have to head into resident services or go into your own home. You can simply craft from anywhere you would like. I feel like this is a great one to carry around because there's so many times that we need to craft, especially if our tools break or something similar. Another one would be the storage shed. This is one of the best items in the entire game. Having a storage shed on you is a must. You can drop this down and take out any items you want or put any away if your inventory is starting to fill a bit full up. And with a storage shed on you, you technically wouldn't even need to carry around all of those tools in your inventory as you could simply store them and take them out as you need them, so this is a really great life hack. One that's a bit more unexpected would actually be a bin. Now a lot of people don't know you can actually use these bin items to dispose of many different types of items that you don't want. This is much easier than just heading over to Nook's Cranny and selling them, especially if the items have basically no value, so I feel like bringing a trash can with you wherever you go is another great little life hack. Inventory management can be a bit of a pain sometime in New Horizons, so I feel like these three items will help with that a ton honestly. With the storage shed arguably being the most important as it'll allow you to take out anything you want at any given time. The storage bin in resident services is where you'll find a ton of lost and discarded items, but one that you might see in here often is the rusted parts which will appear once Gulliver has visited. Now these might not seem like they have any use, but they do have one very important use and that's actually for crafting the robot hero. Now this robot hero needs a ton of these rusted parts and a bunch of different items. So my tip here would be, don't ignore those rusted parts, take them out as soon as you see them and hopefully you should gather even more of them once Gulliver has come to visit. They might not seem like they do much, but yeah, they can be a useful crafting resource. Now I know how much so many players struggle with inspiration for decorating their island. Well, a really great way to get inspiration quickly is to use the surprise me option of the Dream Suite. This will allow you to visit a completely random dream island and there are so many out there. That means that you could see thousands upon thousands of different types of unique islands, all with their own themes, decorating styles and more. You'll see some islands that have been decorated only a little bit, maybe by a player who just started or that's their style, or you might see way more elaborate ones of players who have gone all out decorating their islands. This feature is absolutely incredible and it's definitely a must use if you're struggling to find ideas for your own island. And it's just fun to wander around so many people's islands. Like I said, there really is basically an unlimited amount that you can encounter with this. You'll never run into the same island twice. So I highly recommend using this feature to find lots of inspiration. Now speaking of the dream suite, a question I've gotten a lot on this channel is how do you see how many people have actually visited your dream address? Well the simple way of doing this is going to the Nook Link app, the My Nintendo Switch Online app, and you can see from your passport just how many people have actually visited via your code. So that can help you keep track of how many people have visited, as well as some of the recent dreams you've visited yourself. 
Now here is my dream code if anyone wants to visit as I've had a lot of people ask that. I do still need to update it, but yeah, here's my dream code if you would like to visit Kokomo. If you do decide to tour it and make a video, then definitely tag me because I'd love to watch. Now let's move on to wasps. Wasps are very scary, but there is one little life hack that makes it super easy to hide from them. All you need to do is go into a gazebo item and wasps simply cannot get you. This is a fantastic little trick. I know people have so many ways of capturing wasps, but if you simply want to avoid them and take more time to figure out how to catch them, then hiding in any of the gazebo themed items will be a great way of doing so. Speaking of wasps, a way to completely avoid them is to shake and get resources from coconut trees. Wasps will never spawn in coconut trees no matter what, so you are completely safe from them. They'll only appear in the hardwood trees. That means if you need some fruit desperately, or you want to get some wood from coconut trees, you don't have to worry about running into a wasp. Once again, I know people have their own methods of capturing them easily, but if you simply want to avoid them, this is a great way of doing so. Nook Miles is another problem that a lot of players struggle with, so if you want to get a ton of these, an easy way of doing so is if you have the Happy on Paradise DLC, you can talk to Tom Nook and decorate villager homes. Tom Nook will give you 1000 Nook Miles per decoration of a home, and you can decorate all of your villagers homes in a single day, which means you would get up to 10,000 Nook Miles per day simply by going into your villager homes, making a tiny change to them, you can literally just move one thing around and completing it. This will of course cost you bells each time, but bells are a much easier resource to come by than nook miles. So with this trick you can effectively convert your bells into nook miles which is really cool. Now this next trick is for anyone who is starting up a new island. You can easily tell what the personalities of your first 5 villagers are going to be as they are completely set by the game. The first two that you encounter will be Sisterly and Jock no matter what, so it'll be out of a pool of any of those villages which have this personality. You can check sites like Nookopedia to see which villages have which personality. When you go hunting for them with your Nook Miles to get the next three that you create houses for a little bit later on, these will always be peppy, lazy and normal. So once again, any of the villages who have those personalities, you'll be able to find on a Nook Mile Island to recruit or they'll randomly move into those free houses that you create for Tom Nook to increase the island. The game really wants you to encounter certain personalities, so that is why they do this. Finally, now I know not everyone wants to time travel, so maybe this tip will not be for you. But if you do, an easy way of time traveling in the game isn't to close out. It is simply to press the minus button to get ready to close. From there, press the home button, go and change the time on your Nintendo Switch as you usually would, Go back into the game and save and close by pressing the minus button. A lot of people would change the time and then completely restart their game by closing it and beginning again, but you don't have to. As long as you change the clock whilst the game is still open and then press that minus button to save and end, that'll be an easy way of quickly changing the time. Let me know in the comments section down below what other tips and tricks you have for New Horizons players. If you made it to the end, be sure to comment Bob's Gang so I know you did. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more videos.